Hi. Uh, in this presentation, we will look into uh, models and challenges of uh, thread level parallelism. After watching this presentation and uh, completing the learning task proposed at the end, you should be able to explain what is thread level parallelism and how it can be accomplished with multiprocessors and also uh, to explain how to distinguish uh, thread level parallelism from instruction level parallelism and to uh, describe the two classes of shared memory multiprocessors and the challenges that they face. Um, thread level parallelism implies the existence of uh, multiple program counters and so it is primarily exploited in MIMD architectures. Uh, these systems exploit TLP according to the uh, two software models indicated in this slide, uh, the first of which is normally called uh, parallel processing. The uh, second model is a form of request level parallelism and may be exploited by a single application running on multiple processors, um, such as a database responding to queries or by multiple applications running independently, uh, often called uh, multiprogramming. We will focus on uh, multiprocessors, that is to say, uh, on computers consisting of tightly coupled processors whose coordination and usage are typically controlled by a single operating system and that share memory through a shared address space. If you wonder whether uh, ILP and TLP are similar, uh, bear in mind that the important qualitative distinction between them is that uh, thread level parallelism is identified at a high level by the uh, software system or the programmer and that the um, threads consist of hundreds uh, to millions of instructions that may be executed in parallel. Shared memory uh, multiprocessors comprise the uh, two classes uh, indicated in this slide. The uh, centralized shared memory group is only possible when the number of processors is relatively small. In this class, all the processors have equal access to the shared memory and therefore it is also called uh, symmetric shared memory multiprocessors. Uh, this approach would, however, uh, lead to excessively long access latency in the case of uh, larger processor numbers. So in that case, a, a distributed shared memory scheme is used instead. Uh, this slide shows the structure of a uh, centralized shared memory multiprocessor based on a uh, multi-core chip with one level of shared cache on the multi-core and uh, one or more levels of private per-core caches. In the case of a uh, multi-chip design, uh, an interconnection network links the processors and the memory, uh, but in the case of a single-chip multi-core, uh, the interconnection network is uh, simply the memory bus. So uh, this distributed uh, shared memory structure comprises a, a network uh, interconnecting multiple multiprocessor nodes, multi-core multiprocessor nodes with memory and possibly I.O. Uh, where each processor core shares the entire memory, although the access time to the local memory attached to the core chip is uh, of course much faster than the access time to uh, remote memory. Uh, the uh, application of multiprocessors uh, ranges from running independent tasks with essentially no communication to uh, running parallel programs where uh, threads must communicate to complete the task. There are two main challenges faced by parallel processing. Uh, the first one is the uh, limited parallelism available in programs. And the second one is the uh, relatively high cost of communications uh, due to large latency of remote access uh, in a parallel processor. 
actually the communication of data between separate cores uh, may cost uh, 35 to 50 clock cycles among, uh, and among cores on separate ships anywhere from 100 to uh, more than 300 clock cycles. Uh, inadequate application parallelism is essentially a software issue and it may be attacked with improved algorithms that offer better parallel performance while uh, long uh, latency, remote latency, can be attacked both by the architecture and by the programmer. At the architectural level, uh, we can cache shared data to decrease latency and at the programmer's level, we can try to restructure the data so as to maximize local accesses. Well, to uh, conclude this introduction to TLP, I'd like to invite you to go through the examples referred in this slide, uh, which illustrate the challenges that we have just considered. And that's it. Thanks for your attention.